Hey everybody, what's up? We are here, the three co-founders of Leela Games. Myself, Joe Kim, yeah. Paul Leiden, and Avinash Pandey. <laughs> what's, up? what's up, guys? So, it's our first podcast, kicking things off, and I thought we could just talk about why did we as co-founders want to start this company? And I think that we all have our own personal reasons for wanting to kind of start a new company. And I thought we could kind of go through some of those reasons. So let's start there. What are we doing? What are we trying to build? All right, we're trying to build a hardcore shooter game for mobile. Yeah. That is very ambitious and um, it's really different. So different that people who hear about it want to invest in it. People who learn about it want to join and designers that hear about it are like excited to get on this team. So it's that's about as much I think I can go into on a podcast. I don't know if you think that's enough or what. It's basically a mobile shooter game. Right. And uh, what was your other question? Uh, why did you want to start a company, like a new company, instead of just joining some other company? Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that. And we were even talking a little bit before the you press record on this podcast here. And you know, I, I did go on a walk and try to figure out some things to say. And I was like wondering like, man, am I going to say anything truly worth it? And um, I think the, the biggest reason why I really want to start a company is because I feel like, well, there's a, a couple things, a couple things, but I think the biggest one is I feel like I just want to make something really good. Like when I, I, I there's a lot, I've, I, in my time, I've wanted to, in my life, I've wanted to make a bunch of money. It didn't work out. And there's times where I wanted to have more control over, over, over like a product or a team. It didn't necessarily work out. There's things that I've wanted throughout my career. But one thing that still gets me is holding a game that I didn't build that's really good, thinking, dude, I could have made this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, I feel like, Okay, if I'm so good, if, if I'm such a good free-to-play game designer, because I want to be a great free-to-play game designer, and, and when you're a free-to-play game designer, there's a lot of different kind of guys and girls, right? They say, I'm hyper-casual, or, you know, I'm more of a, I'm more of a whale designer. I'm like, I'm a, I know social, I'm, I'm dope, I'm good. Like, we choose our classes, and we, we claim to be good, but there's a lot of fear there. So if you really had... 100% control, would you really make a good product? And why haven't you made a good product yet? And what happened to your last product? Why didn't that succeed? Let's look at what you've shipped. Where is it at? So for me, I've always felt like I want to be a great game designer. I want to be a great game designer. But then boom, a new app comes out designed by somebody in some other country, didn't think of it. It's skyrocketing through the through the top charts and everyone loves it. And I'm thinking, man, I want that. So I feel that way about product. Like some people feel that way about cars, you know, they'll see a nice car and they'll say, God, that's nice. And they want a loud car. They want it to, they want to rev it really loud at a, at a red light. It pisses everyone off, but they love it. That's what excites me about these things. That's like, I basically want to roll up next to Supercell in my badass car and be like, wow, wow. And be like, you aren't the only one around here. You know what I'm saying? You were not alone. Like, what, what you thought you had it all, you thought you had it all figured out, huh? You thought you had everything figured out. And then just like try to go toe to toe with them, you know? Like the other day I tried to race a Tesla. <laughs> My car's like six years old. <laughs> and I saw this guy next to me in a Tesla and I gave him a little a little chin up. I was like, what's up, dude? You trying to do this? <laughs> and he hell to burn me because my car's old. I don't even know why I did that. But uh, yeah, I think it's similar to that feeling, right? And um, I know that you have a lot of deep reasons to want to start a company from like learning org and I have purpose too. Like I shared similar, you know, I want purpose. I want to be proud. But I think most of all, I'm super excited about building competitive stuff and then rolling it on the showcase for people to ooh and ah and stuff like that. I'm re I really love that. That's my biggest why at the moment, but it, it could change, but that's my biggest why right now. And, and Avinash, for you and as our CTO, why did you want to co-found this company together? So for me, it was not to co-found a company rather than being really excited about uh, building what we are trying to build here. So Paul has already given you a bit about what we are trying to build. Um, 
so my background has always been into building new games building new things just to make sure that i am learning my learning is not stopping yeah. and whenever you know whatever games i have built in past they have actually made me a better engineer so i always think like you know hands on experience is always better than being a person who kind of manages things so that's why my interest has never been like oh build a company where you know i can have 100 people or 200 people team but rather build a game and whoever is needed to build that game that that is kind of my angle towards actually starting this company so i'm really excited about the game which we are trying to build and like the people who are we are, we are going to build with so that's also one of the uh, most important part for me so i really enjoy working with you uh, the the skill set which you bring in this uh, game which we are trying to build the deep understanding of design which paul brings and then you know uh, uh, whatever skills i can bring to kind of make this game successful and at the end launch it where people we can see people playing this game so right. that that's kind of my right. why so right. and without talking about the game too much so it sounds like for both of you is really kind of more around the the product and for you avinash maybe more about trying to learn and gain skills uh and so maybe i could first talk a little bit about the product as well in terms of like one of the things that paul didn't mention but is kind of relevant from our background in terms of like paul having worked at machine zone and fun plus and and when we met at fun plus working on this game called King of Avalon, that these types of games, these 4X games, and when we were originally designing this game, we called it the Game of War of Shooters. And by that, we didn't mean that there was March Battle. We didn't mean like what you would normally think about a 4X March Battle game, but really there are the elements that we're trying to bring from a 4X to a shooter is this notion about deep emotion, right? And so like... These kinds of games have mechanics design in them that causes very deep emotion in the players. And also in terms of the social elements, that there are social designs that everybody says they have social in their game, but it's not just about having chat. It's not just about having a guild, but it's really about designing things in a way where social makes a lot of uh, makes has deeper integration and makes more sense and is more engaging and finally it's about the monetization where you know that's something that paul studied for most of his career is how do you monetize games in a way that makes sense right so that's kind of what we're trying to develop at the product level and uh, again, I won't go into the specific design because Paul's put a lot of time and effort into that. We'll we'll yeah, okay. reveal that as as he wants to reveal it reveal it as as our lead game designer and uh, CCO. But I think for me the and just to get into the reason why I wanted to start Lila Games is is Paul and Avinash kind of were alluding to is like for me I having spent like five years in publishing and having the opportunity to visit so many studios, kind of look under the hood of how they're operating. And even from my ex experience, um, what, my last experience on the dev side, working at Fun Plus, what I found were so many mistakes and so many avoidable mistakes being made. And just in terms of the organizational structure and the approach that was being brought to bear in terms of the operating model and how things were being done. I just wanted a different kind of organization. One that, you know, we say is a learning organization, but you know, when I say that it, it sounds so trite and we've had a number of occasions where we talk about a learning organization and people basically roll their eyes and they laugh. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. We do that too, but no, you don't. And most companies don't. And so what we really wanted to do is have that right kind of culture to enable a learning organization where it's safe to make mistakes, where you are honest in your retrospectives, where you have direct communication, and where you are actively trying to improve every process. And that's something that we're doing right now. Like Paul's developed a new system in terms of like, how do you does a game design spec as it exists today, does that make sense? Or given all of the new technology, given all of the latest ways better. of thinking about mobile game design, is there a better way? And we think there is in terms of 
how we think about our management focus and how we do product management. There are so many different things, even how we do recruiting, right? And we're, we're actually adding a video and a to all of our job descriptions, for example, when we're in, in, when we're doing recruiting, so that people can actually hear a video about the specific job from their from the person who they would be reporting to, right? Just more in, information, more context, even little things like that. And when you think about job descriptions and how nobody does things like that, or nobody even defines the process on the JD, that even those tiny things, and even if you have like ten small things that you improve. And this is something that, you know, we, we, we all as co-founders read this book called Atomic Habits together. And one of the things we talk about is, yeah, if you have like, if you improve 10 different things, 10 to 15%, all of a sudden you've got massive advantage over competitors and things like that. So for me, I'm sorry, I'm getting super long winded here, but two things, one, this concept of a learning organization, which I've been talking about, and secondly, a global organization. We're going all in on India. We believe in India. We think that the, the types of employees we can hire in India are neglected despite being incredibly talented and having a high desire to learn. But someday, assuming we're successful in India, we do want to try and build out globally and have a truly global type of organization. That's something we're not really thinking about probably for the next five, 10 years, who knows how long. But first, you know, first things first is our attempt to build a learning organization, our attempt to build a really, really ambitious product, and hopefully, hopefully achieve success. Yeah. You know, I was thinking when you're talking about the, uh, by the way, it's, it's actually really good what you're saying. Just wanted to say that real quick. Um, when I hear the response to like either from an investor or an advisor or an outside party about your idea of this thing called you're calling a learning org, yeah, I, I think that most of the time these these kind of these people are kind of detached from actually making the product. So like, not that they haven't made a lot of progress in their life, but, but it's been a while since they opened up Basecamp, Asana, Jira, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And as soon as we start sharing what we're changing or like little marginal stuff that we've done, they'll want screenshots of it. They'll want to see why it's cool. You know, I, I was showing somebody my new design doc technique. At first, yeah. they said it'd take forever. I said, this is just, they said, do not do this. This take forever. And afterwards, they were like, Actually, you know, I'm just actually all about getting stuff done fast. But if I had the time, I think I would do it like that. But, uh, you know, you should send me a screenshot of that real quick. You know, like <laughs> all this stuff. You know, I started to really like it, you know. But I think it was cool that most companies I worked at, it's like, this is the game design document. We use Confluence. That's it. End of story. Big old brick. Put that in your bag. That's it. Confluence. This is it. Jira. We use Jira. Is it working? It's what we use, you know what I'm saying? So I like the idea of being in a fresh start and not only just being a fresh start, but being a part of an organization that tries to maintain that fresh start attitude that if we recently switched to Monday and we love monday.com, but if it doesn't work, we're going to find something better, right? And it's marginal, but at high level, it sounds like, why don't you guys just focus on the product? I mean, what is all this new innovative learning stuff? But at, at, at a marginal level, it's actually pretty useful. And yeah. uh, I'm enjoying it, the process so far. Right. Yeah. One of the things I was thinking about, like the feedback which we have got while talking to yeah. uh, investors and even during interviews, uh, one of the candidates, they asked like, uh, you know, why are you trying to build such a big ambitious game? And that too, uh, in India, like where you will find so many challenges of hiring people who have done something like this. So my thought and my kind of understanding of uh, learning organization is that um, like skills are sometimes overrated. And this is something very new, which uh, I was talking yeah. to my friends is uh, you, if how, how do you take up on a challenge which has never been done by you or, or people around you? Like, do you not do it? Or do you, uh, do you find the best approach of doing it? So, of course, like you, if you try to do something which has never been done, you won't find any resources on that. So, what you can do is always, you should be good at breaking down the problems to the smallest level. And then, you know, you any, anybody can work on that. So, if you can do a really good job of 
making sure that you know that atomic step per day that marginal gain per day which takes yeah. you closer to that uh, uh, solution to that product which you are trying to build then you can do a really good job of uh, having maybe not that experienced team but you know uh, re- moving really fast and that's where kind of i feel that le- learning organization is the way to go so like yeah. one way like you you get people who have built these kind of games who have this triple experience but that's not the case most of the time so that's where i find learning organization very relevant to what we are trying to do yeah and by the way i think that to some degree there's a book called zero to one written by this guy named peter thiel and he talks about every big company needs a secret and and i think our secret is really around this notion of being able to get organizational advantage like people aren't looking for organizational advantage in the places that we're looking for it and where we're finding it right and and so it has to do with this notion. I actually did an interview with this guy named Tom Kalinsky, who was the guy who kind of um, like he he kind of came up with and, and helped market Flintstone Vitamins, revive Barbie, oh, yeah, He-Man, all that kind of stuff. And the one thing that he talked about is like when I asked him, how were you able to turn these brands around? And he's like, you know what? It was complacency that the people at these companies doing things the same way, they just don't think about doing things differently or improving. And so for him, like, and how many brands has he turned around over his career? And, you know, and, and later at, at Sega, which was documented in console wars. But the point is, is that, you know, I have met so many of those companies and so many people where, you know, I talked to a product manager and they, you know, I would talk to them about PM tools and, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to use Jira. I'm like, well, okay, great. Um, and yeah, let's talk, just curious, what, what do you find about Jira that's better than it sounds like? I've never tried it. And I'm like, well, you suck then, right? Because it's this whole point, complacency. They're not even trying. There's tools out there that people are talking about. They haven't even tried them. They don't even want to invest the time to get better. And so for us, the kind of company that we want to build, the kind of people we want to employ are people who are looking for every marginal advantage that are not complacent. And I think I that know. is to some degree our secret because, you know, so before we, we met Avanash, Paul and I just, you know, we weren't really actively fundraising, but we thought, okay, let's kind of put together investor pitch and see what happens. And we really led with like, okay, we're going to do all this, all these improvements on organizational advantage and like people were not, not having it. I mean, it didn't resonate at all. And then we met Avinash and that, now we kind of then shifted to a product oriented story, right? It's like, oh, th- look at this great product. And then it's just like, you know, like investment just rained down on us. So, uh, hey, but by the way, we used the learning techniques to get <laughs> to that, to get to that result, right? Yeah. <laughs> And I think what Joseph was saying is that I think he experimented that last week only. So he, when he talks about tools, it's like, you know, you, you you can be good at one tool, but you'll be like, okay, this is my comfort zone. I don't want to go, you know, go out of it. Yeah. And that's what I really liked, you know, uh, being open to learning is that you should not comment unless you try. So right. like give it a try and then you discover things. And that thing could be like, it can make you one step closer to what you are trying to do. So, right. I, I, really, I really hope that if someone like, catches this podcast and is even interested in checking out our company that I think what I what what I wish to be like transmitted or like conveyed when you talk Joseph is that when I think about it for me it's like if you're an engineer if you're a PM if you're a designer there is no real there is no real practice to get better outside of just getting projects that push you so you're kind of at the mercy of like chance and and some decision on where you work and getting better is so critical as a pm as get, or as a designer and then how do you do it like you can't just go take a, a a get better class for most things and if there is off if there is things that we don't often seek them so you know i really hope that just for my experience but anyone who works at our company they leave much better or stay and uh it's I really really am totally totally okay with either but i want people to truly be better at their job and leave making more money and just end up being just so much more uh, value valuable I, I think it comes down to just creating value um right. so 
Yes, you, I feel like if you stay where you are, if you're not learning, then you're not. Well, if you're not, if you're not learning, then you're you're not growing, right? And you're just you're just basically you're you're getting worse. So let's get better, and uh, let's get some people in here who want to get better as well, and let's build like the most insane product we possibly can. Right. Yeah, and maybe uh, at least the final message from me, I think, is that um, when I think about, I, I think when I first thought about starting this company, I did a lot of thinking, and there was actually this article from Clayton Christensen called How Will You Measure Your Life that I really studied and thought about. And um, actually, let me have it. Yeah, I remember that. And basically, it really talked about really trying to understand, like, you know, when you're when you're on your deathbed and when you're 80, looking back on your life, will you really have thought about, well, can you think back on your life and think that it was a life well lived? And a couple of quotes that I thought were really important is that one, he talked about how Clayton Christian went to Harvard Business School and at some reunions, like he would meet with some of the folks uh, from his class and he saw what happened to their lives. They didn't have good marriages. They, even though they may have been materially successful, they had other things in their lives that didn't make sense. And so one of the things he wrote is that they didn't keep the purpose of their lives front and center as they decided how to spend their time, talents, and energy. And so for me, when I thought about, you know, should I just join another company and just kind of turn the crank? Or should I try and work on something that, is re that would really be worthy of my time? And so that really weighed heavily on me in terms of like, this is why I want to start another company. And the other thing about Clayton Christensen is that he actually uh, got cancer. And so that made him think a lot about his life. And, you know, I highly recommend reading this, um, uh, reading this, book, uh, this article. It's called, How Will You Measure Your Life? But kind of like in the final paragraph of this, of this, uh, of this article that he wrote, um, you know, he ended with, with this, which was where he wrote, don't worry about the level of individual prominence you have achieved. Worry about the individuals you have helped become better people. This is my final recommendation. Think about the metric by which your life will be judged and make a resolution to live every day so that in the end, your life will be judged a success. And so for me, just thinking about, I have this opportunity to try and create an organization that is fundamentally better that's to, to me that's what got me really excited and wanted to start this company i completely agree awesome. one of the reasons uh, and i feel really strongly about in this company is like whenever we come to a point where making a decision becomes really hard then we always go with the philosophy of do the right thing right. and i think that's one of the core philosophies like we want to create an organization where we the right doing right thing is one of the core values of of the philosophy of the company right so, all right, guys, this is our first podcast. I think that's it. Uh, if any of you viewers or, or listeners out there want to stay tuned, we're not sure where we're going to take this, but we're going to probably talk about our story in terms of Leela Games. We'll talk about lessons we've learned and try to share that with, with, uh, with all of you out there. So please do stay tuned. And there it is. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right.